Mark chapter 1, when you dare holler back word. word. Reading at verse number 35. Here begins the reading of the word of God. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, Let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also, because for this purpose I have come forth. And he was preaching in their synagogue throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he has spoken, immediately, let the church say immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, let the church say however. however. Let the church say however. however. He went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city but was outside in deserted places and they came to him from every direction. Would you do me a favor and look at verse number 44 once again? And he said to him, See that you say nothing, let the church say nothing, nothing. to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, let the church say however, however. he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus can no longer openly enter the DMV area. And they came to him from every direction. Would you look your neighbor in the eyes on the way to your seat and give them my sermon title on this morning. Say, neighbor, neighbor. I just can't keep it to myself. That's the wrong neighbor. Find somebody else. Look them dead in the eye and say, neighbor, I just can't keep it to myself. That's the wrong neighbor. Find somebody else who look like they're filled with the Holy Ghost and say, oh neighbor, I just can't keep it to myself. You may be seated in the presence of God. And Jesus said to him, say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city but was outside in a deserted, a desert place and they came to him from every direction. I just can't keep it to myself. My brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, many of us live in a day and a time when we reveal what needs, which needs not to be revealed and we conceal what should be revealed. We live in a day and time when we reveal what needs not to be revealed, but we conceal what should be revealed. We sometimes refuse to reveal or share or testify to that which is utmost important to us, and yet we share the very least of things that are not important to us. We tend to rally our conversation and our communication around negative things that does not encourage people, does not educate people, and does not enable people. And when we should open our mouth and speak so we can encourage and educate person, we sometimes tend to be silent or waiting for somebody else to do it. Now I know that we have no problem sharing things with people. 
if we have a favorite football team, whether it's the Redskins, whether it's the Raven, whether it's Dallas Cowboy, as soon as your team scores, or as soon as your team win, you make sure that you attach that winning score either to social media, you text somebody, you tweet somebody, you email somebody, you call somebody and you say, did you see that? Because that was good news to you. If somebody gets engaged, they share it with somebody. Nobody falls in love and never tells somebody that they're falling in love. You spread the word, even by the way you look, you conduct yourself. You tell somebody, child, he proposed, and I'm happily said yes. Whenever something good happened to us, we have no problem sharing it with somebody. When we get a promotion on our job, we make sure that Lottie, Dottie, and everybody knows that God has upgraded us and given us a promotion on our job. Whenever God makes a way for us, we've got no problem sharing with anybody because we know that God didn't have to do it, but thank God he did. And many of us sometimes are reluctant to share the good news of the gospel. Many of us, God has been tremendously blessing us, open doors for us, make ways out of nowhere for us. Many of us can testify that when we look back over our life, God has indeed been a mighty good to us. When we look back over our lives and we know that the bullet should have killed us and the drug should have destroyed us and we should have committed suicide 10 years ago, but yet we're here in our right mind. We've got no problem testifying to somebody. The only person who is qualified to keep quiet in here this morning is for those of you that God hasn't done anything for. But if God has made a way for you, if God has opened a door for you, if God has kept the enemy from you, if God has kept you from danger seen and unseen, the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you have not been redeemed by the hand of God, if you've never experienced the power of God, if you've never experienced the presence of God, if you've never experienced the move of God, then you are entitled to sit there like a bump on the log. But if you can look back over your life and you know it's only by the grace of God, it's only by the mercies of God, it's only by the job of God that you haven't lost your mind and committed suicide, touch your neighbor and say, SOS, slide over some because I've got to praise and i got to get it out. There is no way that God has been so good to you and you're going to keep it to yourself. There's no way that he's open a door for you. There's no way he's made a way for you. There's no way that he supplied your need and you can just sit there and look straight ahead and acting like God hasn't done anything for you. Maybe you got amnesia this morning. So God sent me to Jericho City of Praise to tell you hit rewind and see how far the Lord has brought you from the doors he's opened, the ways he's made, how he kept you from danger. See? and on seed and when you begin to see how good God has been to you your testimony ought to be I just can't keep it to myself I can't hold it to myself Jeremiah tried to do it Jeremiah said I wasn't gonna holler I wasn't gonna scream I wasn't gonna shout I wasn't gonna dance but Jeremiah said the longer I think of the goodness of Jesus it becomes like fire shut up in my bone I wish I had a fiery church I wish I had somebody who woke up on fire this morning I wish I had somebody who said when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me uh, my soul rise out hallelujah we we have no problem we have no problem we have no problem uh, sharing when our favorite football team win we have no problem sharing uh, when we get engaged or when we get married and if you following me on social media if you're on twitter i am dr jazz if you're on facebook i am dr jazz if you're on instagram i am dr jazz if you still on myspace i am dr jazz and if you in the hood i am dr jazz but if you follow me in any of those social media you have seen recently i have put two pictures of two wonderful fabulous baby i'm a great 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 aunt. You see, my niece, niece, niece just provided twins in our family. Two, one boy and one girl. And every time you go on social media, I've been putting their pictures out there with them having clothes on, with them having clothes on, with them flip side, upside down, twisted the wrong way. And the mother called me and said, Auntie, wait till I give you
you some decent picture. I said, I can't wait till you give me picture to post them because when I think of how God blesses us with two healthy babies, I wish I had somebody in here. They got 10 fingers and 10 toes. They are in their right mind. I can't keep it to myself. I wish I had about 50 people up in here who said, when I look at my own children, I know sometimes they got on my last nerve. I know sometimes they drive me crazy, but I'm glad they are alive and they are in perfect health. And in spite of the places they've been and the stuff they've done, they're still here. The least I ought to do is thank God for my crazy child. All of us, all of us have no problem sharing, sharing the good news. When I run across somebody in the hallway, they show me that diamond on their finger and they say, Pastor, he finally proposed. I was talking to a friend of mine on yesterday and my God, she had a rock that blind me and she told me this is for 25 years of going through good times and bad times and she shared some wonderful experience with me. I met many people who share how God promoted them and how God bless them and how God make ways for them and how God has elevated them but yet there's some of us that God has blessed and we've yet to say anything we've yet to show a sign we've yet to tell somebody we've yet to declare to somebody that's who I came to preach to this morning I come to preach to those of you who can talk more about the red skin than the blood I come to preach to those of you who get happy over a football game but you can't get happy in church I come to preach to those of you who get happy over clothes, cash, crib, but you can't get happy over Christ. I come to preach to those of you who get happy over Mercedes, but you can't get happy over having a peace of mind. You see, if I lose it all and still got King Jesus, I got more than enough to start all over with. And if God never done another thing for me, if he doesn't open another door, if he doesn't supply another the need if he doesn't give me another burden just the mere fact of all that he's already done for me will make me tear this place upside down who am I preaching to this morning who said I just came keep it to myself because the tragedy is this cousin Peggy is that we tend to reveal what should be concealed and we never reveal what should be revealed I just said something uh, there's some stuff you ought to keep to yourself anybody grew up in that generation that what happens in this house come on up in here what happened there are some things you don't need to put on Facebook you don't need to put on Twitter you don't need to put on Instagram there's some pictures you don't need to post preach pastor jazz i'm trying to help some of y'all there are some things you don't need to post because everybody cannot handle your nakedness god help me in here that's why the bible says that jesus went to a solitary place he went to a place where he can go apart before he falls apart he goes to a place where he can be real and you cannot be real or transparent with everybody. There's some things you ought to take to the grave with you. I said there's some secrets you ought to take to the grave with you. There are some stuff nobody should know but you, Jesus, and your dog. I wish I had a church in here. I said there's some conversation we shouldn't even have outside of our house. We grew up in the arena or we grew up in the era that what happens in this house stays in this house. I don't care if we cuss, fight, throw stones, but when we get to church, ain't nobody gonna know it. Or y'all going y'all ain't hearing me. I don't care if we can't stand each other when we come to church, ain't nobody gonna know it. I don't care if we just had a major argument in the car when we show up in here. Oh, y'all don't wanna be real up in here because I'm not gonna come give the devil an entrance into my house. In fact, that's why some of y'all never understand why the person next to you is shouting because they don't even look like they've been through something. Because just cause you've been through something don't mean you got to look like it. Would you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you knew the stuff I had to go through, and if you knew the stuff I've been through, you'll understand why I praise him. But my good news, my testimony is, I don't even look like what I've been through. Would you go ahead and testify to your neighbor and say, God, you don't know what I've been through. You don't 
don't know what happened to me this week. You don't know what happened to me 10 years ago. I don't even look like it. And the way you want to shout is not only do you not look like it, but you don't even smell like it. God help me. I need a church right here. Tell your neighbor, say, I don't even smell like it. The odor of what I've been through is not even on me. The residue is not even on me. I've been to hell, but I don't look like hell. I've been in the furnace, but I don't look like fire. I've been through something, but I don't look like. I don't even look like. I don't even smell like what I've been through. That's what Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego testimony were. They were thrown in the furnace, and when they came out of the furnace, they didn't even look like fire, and they didn't smell like smoke. I, I'm not trying to insult you, but go ahead and smell your neighbor and say, you don't even smell like smoke. You don't even smell like drama. You don't even smell like you're about to commit suicide. You don't even smell like you're about to lose your mind, and just in case they think you haven't been through anything, go ahead and testify to your neighbor and say, when I look back, I feel like preaching this morning, when I look back over my life and I think things over twice, I should have been dead, buried in my grave, but I don't even look like what I've been through. Somebody give me a pause this morning and say, I don't even look like in fact, would you do me a favor? Would you get your phone out and would you take a selfie and would you upload it on the Jericho website so the devil can see you, so your haters can see you, so your liars can see you, so your ex can see you, so people who walked out and you can see you because what they meant for evil, God turned it. Somebody just turned right here. I said, God, somebody just turned. God turned it around. He turned your mourning into joy. He he turned your sadness into gladness. He turned your problem into peace. He turned your sitting down into dancing. Somebody ought to thank God that you serve a God who has the ability to turn your situation all the way around. Sometimes we, we hide what should be revealed don't ever reveal what should be. Really, that's what the text is all about. The text teaches you and I how to have a balance between what should be revealed and what should be concealed. The Bible said that Jesus traveling, preaching and teaching the gospel. And we in Mark chapter 1 and the Bible says that Jesus is preaching and teaching the gospel as he's traveling, preaching and teaching the gospel. Now in verse number 40, a leper came to him imploring him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you are willing, would you make me clean? Here comes a leper, here comes somebody who has been ostracized by society. Here comes somebody who is an outcast. Here comes somebody who is a reject. He's rejected not because he ain't got no money, it's because he's got an inward condition that manifests itself physically. The Bible said that he is a leper. Let the church say leper. He, he's got leprosy. Let the church say leprosy. Uh, he, he's got a condition that everybody knows about. And it's one thing uh, for you to know you got a condition. It's another thing for everybody to know it. It's one thing for you to know that there's tragedy in your family. There's mess in your family. It's another thing when everybody knows it. Here is this man who's got an inward condition that now manifests itself physically. Uh, He's sick on the outside and because he's got leprosy, he's not invited to Jericho City of Praise. Because he's got leprosy, he cannot sing in the choir. Because he's got leprosy, if he were to come to church, he had to sit in the balcony and he's got to have bells in his hands and bells in his feet and he's got to holler unclean unclean, unclean. Uh, look at this man. He is rejected because he's got an inward condition that manifests itself physically. Uh, he's got an inward condition that everybody knows about. And my brothers and sisters, uh, before you throw stones at this man, all of us from the pulpit to the pew uh, got something on the inside that if it wasn't for the grace of God, uh, it will manifest itself on the outside. Uh, all of us got something that we're struggling with. Everybody got a battle. Everybody got a issue. Everybody got something but for the grace of God, but for the mercies of God. Everybody got something on a good day. It 
will trip you up. On a good day, it will mess you up. On a good day, it will destroy you. All of us got something. Somebody holler, all of us. All of us from the pulpit to the pew, whether you're elder, reverend, doctor, bishop, elder, whether you speak in tongues and swing on the chandelier, whether you got two bottles of Benny Hen oil in your car, all of us got something on a good day. If it wasn't for the grace of God, and the mercies of God, it will trip us up. It will mess us up. It will destroy us. In fact, that's why I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood covers us all. It's not because we haven't been to places we shouldn't have been. It's not because we haven't done stuff we shouldn't have done. The only reason why we are alive in our right mind is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that reaches to the highest mountain and the blood that flows to the lowest valley. Ah, this man has a condition he's got an issue he's got a habit he's got a struggle but when he heard that Jesus was passing by the Bible said that he came and he kneeled he kneeled before Jesus and asked Jesus the question if you are willing if you are willing would you please make me clean listen to the cry of the man I'm tired of being in this condition I'm tired of wrestling with this I'm tired of struggling with this would you do something about it if you are willing what you mean if you are willing what you mean if I'm willing God is always willing to heal the broken hearted if you're willing, would you please clean me? Would you cleanse me? Would you please deliver me? Would you please do something about my condition? And verse 41 said, and Jesus moved. Okay, y'all miss your cue to shout. Uh, uh, I said, and Jesus Okay, y'all still miss your cue to shout. Uh, you see, I move, I shout over the word moved because he doesn't have to move, God help me. The Bible said, and Jesus moved. I wish I had somebody who can testify this morning that the only reason why you got delivered is because Jesus moved. You didn't even have the strength to move yourself, God. You didn't even have the strength to pick your own self up. You didn't even have the strength to lay hands on yourself. But I serve the kind of God who don't mind relocating into where I am. He does not wait till I get to where he is. He relocates and finds me wherever I am. Whether I'm in the bottom of the pit, whether I'm on the top of the mountain, wherever I am, I serve the kind of God who's got an APB out on me. And when he moves, I move just like that. Okay, y'all miss your cute hana. I said, when he moves, I move just like that. I serve a God who specializes in moving towards my direction. Jesus is moved. And the text said he's moved with compassion. Y'all read in your Bible? He's moved with compassion. He's moved with compassion. Let the church say compassion. He's moved because he is filled with compassion. Nothing is worse, Jericho, than sharing your condition with somebody who ain't got compassion. An old preacher told me my problem has never been that I shared stuff with people. Your problem is you shared the right stuff with the wrong people. Okay, I just said something. You went over your head. Your problem is not that you shared stuff with people. The problem is you shared your stuff with the wrong people. And you can always tell if they're the wrong people if their response is condemnation and not compassion. I don't need nobody to condemn me. I feel bad all by myself. I need somebody who got compassion. I wish I, I, I don't need nobody to pull me down. I'm already down. I need somebody to remind me that no weapon that is formed against me will be able to prosper. I don't need nobody to be sad with me. I'm already sad by myself. I need somebody to hold up in me and say weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning so would you do me a favor and do a pew check and say neighbor it's not by accident that I'm sitting next to you it's by divine providence because God wants me to encourage you and to let you know he may not come when you want him but he's always on time he's moved with with what? He's moving what? Compassion. You can't help nobody till you have compassion. 
You can't help nobody until you've got empathy. You can't help nobody until you've sat where they sat. Slept where they slept. Y'all ain't hear me this morning. I don't need nobody who got a pedigree or a degree. I need somebody who got compassion. I'd rather have somebody who got compassion and ain't that smart, but somebody who got all the degree. But as soon as I share my issue with them, they roll their eyes at me because they got amnesia, because they forgot they wasn't born safe and they ain't always had it together. It's by the grace of God and the mercies of God that your marriage is still together. It's by the grace of God and the mercies of God that you got the house you got. You can't roll your eyes at me. You cannot throw stones because we all live in a glass house. Can I preach up in here like I got the Holy Ghost? Tell your neighbor, say, you can't throw stones because we all live in a glass house. We all got something in our house that if God don't move on it, it will wipe us out. But thank God for grace. He's moved with compassion, not condemnation, not criticism, but he's moved with compassion. And look at the level of Jesus' compassion. He doesn't speak to the man, he touches him. God, my God, my God, my God, y'all got to read your Bible. He, he, he doesn't just speak to him. He says, I am willing to make myself even vulnerable. Because when I touch you, whatever you got, I wish I had somebody in here. Whatever you got, if I touch you, whatever you got is going to rub off on me. But I'm so glad I serve a God who don't mind rubbing shoulders with me, knowing that whatever disease or what an issue or what a sickness I've got, he also can. He also can. He can get it. That's the kind of God that we serve who is so moved with compassion that he doesn't just speak into my life, but he touches my life. God, God, y'all, y'all got to catch it. There's a whole bunch of people who will speak to you, but won't even want to touch you. But I'm so glad I serve the kind of God who don't mind being wounded for my transgression. I wish I had a church. Who don't mind being bruised for my iniquity. He don't mind rubbing shoulder with me. He who was without sin became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus said, I am willing what what a testimony that I serve a God who's always willing to do what he wants to do whatever he wants to do in the life of the believer he wants to do it and the Bible said as soon as he spoke somebody read their Bible thank you as soon as he spoke immediately okay okay y'all missed the quantum leap shout right here it wasn't a gradual healing but the Bible said as soon as Jesus spoke the man was immediately healed. I don't know who I came to preach this morning, but there's a word that is coming your way. He doesn't even have to do anything because the power in the spoken word, he said, when I speak it, it's already done. You just got to wait for the manifestation of it. Whatever he said, he promised he will do it because God never speaks a word that he cannot back up what he spoke. If he said it, he will. God, I feel it. I said, if he said it, he will do it. I don't care if it takes 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Tell your neighbor, say, wait on him because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings. He speaks. And as soon as he speaks the word, the man is. It's called a sudden miracle. It's an immediate miracle. The manifestation of the man healing took place right then. And there's about 50 of y'all who've had that experience that as soon as God spoke into your life, you saw the manifestation. As soon as he spoke something, I wish I had. You didn't have to wait for it. You didn't have to delay. You wouldn't have to look for it. As soon as you spoke it, you stepped into that season. You stepped into that opportunity. You stepped into that moment because this is the year for a quantum leap. God help me. This is the year where God says, you ain't got to wait, faith, because as soon as I speak it, you
are operating under open heaven and I'm going to do it before I ever finish it. I need about a hundred people in here. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say as soon as he speaks it, it's already done. I said it's already done. The door is already open. The way is already made. He's already supplied that need because the power of God is in his spoken word. He speaks and immediately, suddenly, God, I wish I had a church this morning, a shift takes place in his condition. Y'all missed it. I said a shift took place from leprosy to now being healed. God, I need you to find three people say a shift is about to take place. Tell them say a shift is gonna move so fast. If you blink, you gonna miss it. A shift is about to take place in your life. A shift is gonna take place in your family. A shift is about to take place in your finances. Would you find at least three people and put their hands off like you're about to pull it off and say get ready for the shift. You ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready for the shift. You ain't seen another the dimension you ain't seen another season but you ain't got to wait till you see it to shout you can shout even before you see it you can praise him even before you see the manifestation yeah. Yeah. as soon as he has spoken immediately the leprosy left him came to prophesy to a hundred of y'all something is about to leave you this morning God. I don't know who I came to preach to but can you find at least four people and say whatever you've been battling with it's about to leave you that depression is leaving you that frustration is leaving you that anger is leaving you whatever you've been dealing with it's about to leave you immediately him it left him touching him and say it's leaving me and leaving come on tell him say it's leaving me it's leaving me in fact pull the hand say it's already left me tell him it's already off of me every lie every gossip is off of me every rejection is off of me every bitterness is off of me everything you thought about me is off of me because if God be for me who can be against me would you pull your neighbor by the hand and say it's off me in fact go ahead and shake it off of you shake every lie off of you Every rejection off of you, every bitterness of it, it's off, it left. Immediately, whatever he's been dealing with, it, it left him. And he was, okay, y'all miss your second part to shout. It's one thing for it to leave you. It's another thing when the residue is not on you, God. I, I don't know who I came to preach to. I don't know who I came to preach to on my birthday weekend. But tell your neighbor, say, it didn't just leave me, but the residue ain't even on me. I said, the residue of leprosy is no longer on me. The residue of the alcohol, the drug, the bad relationship, it is no longer on me because whom the Son has set free is free. heals me he takes it off of me he cleans me why you can imagine how this brother must be feeling oh my god he's been living with leprosy all his life and my god for the first time he's singing the theme song won't he make me clean inside I mean for the first time he, he wells come he can come to the choir for the first time he can show up at church for the first time he can shake somebody up he, Jesus takes it off of him and cleans him and I'm excited about that but Jesus turns around and gives him two commands he, he said I want you to go show yourself to the priest and uh, go show yourself go show yourself go don't show yourself to the priest in other words get to church and show yourself to somebody. He said, I want you to go show yourself. He said, show yourself to the priest. And he said, I want you to pay or to give a seed. 
based on the level of your deliverance. God help me. Yeah, he, he said, go show yourself to the priest and I want you to make sure that you provide the priest with an offering. It's going to get quiet right here. In other words, whenever God has done something for you, you got to bring something to him. God, I, I want you to bring something in and show yourself to the priest and give the priest an offering and let the priest offer it up on your behalf because you know God didn't have to clean you. Somebody going to catch it. He said, when you come to church, you better not come empty-handed. When you come to church, you got to come with something in your hand. I don't care if it's a turtle. I don't care if it's a dove. I don't care if it's a goat I don't care if it's a pigeon but when you come and God has done anything for you you got to bring something and don't just bring lip service don't just bring clapping in your hands but if God healed you and if he took something off for you he said I want you to get to Jericho and I want you to bring something to let God know you're grateful let him know you're absolutely grateful that he's done something for you. He's healed you. He's delivered you. He's cleansed you. He's brought you out. He's healed your broken body. He said when you get to church, you ain't got to wait for the ushers. You ain't got to wait for offering time. When you look back over your life and you see that he's taking some stuff off for you. And I don't know about anybody, but God got a double blessing. He didn't just lift it off for me, but he cleansed me. It's one thing for him to lift it. It's another thing for him to remove the residue. He said, I want you to do that. I want you, I want you to come and I want you to bring something. I, I want you to bring something. I want you, I want you to bring something. I want you to bring something. I want you to bring something tangible. Not something superficial. I want you to bring something that is tangible. I want you to give it to the priest. Put it at the feet of the priest. And when somebody asks you why you're giving, tell him because it's because he cleansed me. Oh God, y'all miss your cue. It's because he cleansed me. He said, I want you to bring something. Go show yourself the priest and when you show yourself to the priest, the priest will come in with an offering and offer that offering up on your behalf. That, that's what Leviticus says. It says, whenever you've been cleansed from something, when, whenever God has provided a miracle for you, whenever God has provided healing for you, whenever God has done anything for you, whether on your job, whether in your personal life, he said, you ought to come and you ought to come and show yourself. Oh God, I wish somebody would catch this. In other words, don't just show up in church, ah, but you ought to show yourself. You ought to parade yourself, not because you want them to see you. You want them to see what God is able to do in your life. He said, when you come, I want them to see how fired up and excited you are that God provide a miracle in your life. Whenever you come, I want you to come with excitement because you know in the last seven days, he could have wiped you out. Whatever you've been through should have killed you, but God kept you from danger seen and unseen. He said, when you you come bring something now we ain't got no problem bringing it we ain't got no problem coming and we have no problem bringing it that's what you've been doing for the last one minute he said you've been bringing it because you know that God did it we have no problem honoring that and what a wonderful church we have that moves when the spirit of God moves on your life you're not just given because pastor is saying so you know that God there's something for you. You know that God brought you out. You know that God healed you. And your testimony is only God can do it. I got no problem with that first command. It's the second one that trips me up. The second one really is the first one. I want you to show yourself to the priest. Bring a sacrifice. But do me a favor. Don't you tell nothing to nobody. Ask your neighbor, say, has Jesus lost his mind? Go ahead and ask them. Wait a minute. I've been down for so long. I've been sick for so long. I've had leprosy for so long. I've been waiting all my life for you to heal me. And now that you heal me, now that you saved me, now that you delivered me, you don't want me to say. You 
don't want me to tell nobody. You don't want me to write about it. You don't want me to tweet about it. You don't want me to put it on Facebook. You don't want me to put it on Instagram. Action is it has Jesus lost his mind. Listen, sometime you got to disobey Jesus. And this is one of it. Y'all miss your key. I know it just messed with your theology. He said, don't say nothing. Don't whisper nothing. Don't holler nothing. Don't write nothing. And the Bible said, and the brother rolled out. And everything that Jesus tell him not to do, he did it. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, Jesus said, don't say nothing. And the Bible said, as soon as he ran across the first person, he said, listen, I got to tell you something. I once was blind, but now I can see. I once was lost, but now I'm. He does everything opposite. He ran his mouth so bad that Jesus can no longer show up at McDonald's without anybody recognizing him. He ran his mouth so bad that everybody in the DMV area knows that Jesus healed him. He ran his mouth so bad. So I saw him. Yeah, I saw him. I saw him at the bank. I did. I saw him at the bank. I saw him at the mall. I saw him at the movie. And he's still running his mouth. And I asked him, I said, didn't Jesus tell you, shut up? Why you keep running your mouth? Number one, he said, Dr. Jazz, the reason why I ran my mouth and the reason why I can't keep it to myself is because it's too good to be true. I see y'all later. I see y'all later. Have God ever blessed you in such a way that the only way you know it's a blessing is you got to tell somebody because it's just too good to be true. I see y'all later. Y'all ain't ready for me. But touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's why I got to tell somebody. I need somebody to pinch me. I need somebody to pull on me. Because when I look at all the stuff the Lord has done, and all the ways that the Lord has made, and all the doors that the Lord has opened, I got to tell somebody. So y'all got to excuse me. Because last week in Atlanta, I kept telling everybody I was the pastor of Jericho City of Praise it's not cause I was boasting it was it was too good to be true so I had to tell somebody for them to look at me and say really they say how you got that position I said only by the grace of God only by the mercies of God pull your neighbor by the head and say neighbor it's too good I said it's too good has he opened a door for you? And it's too good to be true. Has he healed your body? And it's too good to be true. Has he brought you out? And it's too good to be true. Pull your neighbor by the hand like you're about to pull it off. And say, neighbor, it's just too good. How he's been blessing me. How he's been making ways for me. I can't believe in myself. I just can't keep it because it's too good. You ever wake up at night? I was texting Bishop Jakes this week. I said, man, little girl from Trinidad. And this evening, y'all gonna see the church I came out of, 400 members, and then God gonna drop me in this place. Too good. I mean, have you ever been blessed by God that you have to pinch yourself? Go ahead and pinch yourself. Say, it, it, it may look like it's too good to be true, but tell your other name and say, it's true. Come on. Tell him, say, it is true. I mean, he did do that thing. He did open that door. He did supply that need. He did give me that promotion. You may not believe it, but listen, God did it. And every now and then you ought to thank God that you can't keep it to yourself because it's too good. But here's the second thing. It's too wonderful to conceal. It's too wonderful to conceal. How can you 
conceal all the wonders of God in your life? How, how can you conceal the, the miracles and the blessings and the breakthroughs and the, and, and the deliverance? God, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, how in the world can you sit on all of that? God, that's, that's why I got to be in a church that moves. I, 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 I can't be a part. That's why I, I, I can't be one of those members that belong to a church that sing, I shall not be moved. Uh, just like a tree uh, uh, planted uh, by the rivers of uh, water. I, I can't be one of those members who sit there and, and wait for a fan to fan me and just uh, sit there and look all cute and sophisticated. And I can't be one of those members that don't mess the mascara up. And I, I can't be one of those members that don't mess the perm up. I, I mean, if that's your style, that's your pedigree. I, I ain't dogging you. Uh, if, if that's what you want to do, go ahead with your bad self. But but when I look at my own life uh, and I see how God has been so good to me uh, and the ways that God has made for me uh, and the doors that God has opened for me, uh, when I look at your life and see how God has brought you out of nothing uh, and put you in places you never thought you would have been uh, and give you jobs that you're not even qualified for uh, and give you a position you're not even gifted to occupy uh, and open doors for you. When I look at your life uh, and I hear your testimony uh, of how the Lord has brought you out uh, and how the Lord has brought you through. Uh, I wonder how in the world uh, can you still look that cute in church uh, on a Sunday morning uh, and then you go to the Redskin game uh, or the Ravens game uh, or you go to the Cowboy game uh, and you got shoes on one side uh, and you got a purse on the other side. Uh, pull your neighbor by the hand uh, and say neighbor if that's your MO, uh, if you just like the sit there like a bump on the log and sing the national anthem I shall not be moved it's alright with me but I've got to show some sign I've got to do something because it's too wonderful for me to conceal you ain't got to do it like me but you ought to show some sign every now and then you ought to wave your hands every now and then you ought to stomp your feet every now and and then uh, you ought to throw your head back uh, every now and then uh, you ought to tell God thank you uh, every now and then uh, you ought to make a laugh every now and then uh, you ought to do a dance uh, every now and then uh, you ought to rock back and forth uh, every now and then uh, you ought to sing amazing grace uh, how sweet yeah. the sound uh, that's ringed uh, a wretch like me uh, I once was lost uh, but now I'm found uh, I used to be blind uh, but now I see uh, good night Jericho uh, and God bless you real good uh, I see y'all in the glory hall uh, so we can celebrate break my birthday uh, but pull your neighbor by the hand uh, and say oh neighbor uh, before we get uh, to the glory hall uh, I got something to tell you uh, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation uh, the Lord is the strength of my life uh, of whom shall I be afraid uh, pull your neighbor by the hand uh, and say we getting out of here uh, but can I tell you one more time uh, I just can't keep it uh, to myself uh, I can't keep it praise. I can't keep his goodness. I can't keep his peace. I can't keep his joy. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor, this is my last time that I'm pulling on you. But I came to tell you he's been mighty good. Has he been good to anybody? Has he made a way for anybody? Has he opened a door for anybody? Has he saved anybody? Let the redeemed of the Lord Say so If he's done anything for you Say so If he heal your body Say so If he deliver you Say so I just can't keep it To myself Say yeah just holler one more time, yeah. Somebody holler, yeah. Put your hands on your back like if you're a preacher, say, yeah. He's been good. He's been good. Hey. I said, he's been good. 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 He
He's been good. He's been bread when I'm hungry, water when I'm thirsty. He's been a doctor in a sick room. He's been a lawyer in a courtroom. He's been good. Has he been good? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Come on, stay. It's my birthday. Don't let me work this hard. Yeah! Somebody scream, yeah! Come on, find you, find you five people. Say, I gotta tell it to somebody. Find you five people. Say, I gotta tell it to somebody. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. He's been better to me. He's been good. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh, somebody just got it. Somebody just got it. Somebody just got it. Somebody got it. Come on, tell him he's been my, my good. He's been mighty good to me. I said he's been mighty, mighty. I said he's been mighty, mighty. I said he's been mighty, mighty. He's been mighty. I feel God. I said he's been mighty, mighty. He's been mighty, mighty. He's been mighty, mighty, mighty. Mighty, mighty, mighty. He's been good. You might as well dance. If you gon' shout, you might as well shout. If you gon' run, you might as well run. But somebody give him a prize. Come on, pick it up and put it down. Pick it up and put it down. Pick it up and put it down. You ought to get your praise partner. Get your praise partner. Just can't keep it. Can I say thanks? Come on, stand all over this building. 
for all the things you've done for me. Things so undeserving, yet you prove your love to me. The voices of a million angels cannot express. Don't move us, just we don't need y'all to touch anything at the altar. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. For the things he has done with his blood, with his love, he has come on. The doors of the church is open. Somebody needs to get saved today. Somebody needs to walk looking for a church to connect. We'll be glad to have you. Come on, come on, come on, come on to God. Be the glory. Here they come. God bless you. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Listen, what an amazing, amazing God that meets me where I am to do for me what I can't do for myself. And I don't care what your condition is. I don't care how long you've been in that condition. Jesus sent us this way to let you know that he has the power to heal you and cleanse you and to make you whole. Come on, 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 come on. Musician plays that softly. I want to give you all a chance to do that, to practice what I've been preaching. There's somebody standing next to you. Would you invite them? Say, are you thinking about walking? I'll walk with you. I'll walk with you. Go ahead. You can't keep this gospel to yourself. There's a person standing next to you on your left, on your right. Say, are you saved? Get an answer. Looking for a church home? Get an answer. And if they said they're looking for a church home or haven't been saved, come on, walk with them this way. 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 Come on. 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 I don't beg for money, but I do beg for souls. Come on. Come on. Come on. Heaven rejoices over one. We got two, so there ought to be a bigger rejoice in here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Jericho. Look down your road. Make sure everybody, make sure everybody, make sure everybody, make sure everybody on your road is safe. Make sure they belong to our church. Make sure they belong to our church. Come on. Come on. Come on. I got a minute for somebody else. You thinking about walking this morning. You thinking about walking. Come on. I don't care what condition or situation. You thinking about walking. Y'all know how we do it, Jericho. Y'all know how we do it. There you go. Y'all know how we do it. Keep on clapping, for Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. You're the cloud of witnesses. Keep on clapping. Somebody else is thinking about walking. Come on, I got a minute for you. I got a minute for you. Come on, come on. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. Keep on clapping. Clap like you had the red skin. I need to hear it. Keep on clapping. Somebody else is thinking about walking. Somebody else is thinking about walking. Come on. Come on this way. We'll be glad to have you. We'll celebrate with you. We'll celebrate with you as you walk. Would you do me a favor? Come on, look down your road. Say, neighbor, you thinking about walking? I'll walk with you. 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 I just can't keep it to myself. I just can't keep it to myself. I just can't keep this gospel to myself. Well, come on and put your hands together and celebrate them as they can. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Come on, celebrate them. Celebrate them. Let heaven rejoice. Let heaven hear you rejoicing. 
Let heaven hear you rejoicing. Come on, celebrate them, y'all. Celebrate them. I was in Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. I, was, I preached there this past week for Bishop Joseph Walker. She heard me in Nashville, Tennessee, and Nashville this past week on Tuesday, right? And she had just relocated here, showed up in here this morning. And... Come on, y'all can do better than that. And wonderful young man, Elder Brenda, you guys know him. Amen. Come on, celebrate them. Come on, but you follow Elder Thomas right here. Keep on clapping till they get to that door. Keep on clapping till they get to that door. Keep on clapping till they get to that door. Come on, keep on clapping. Let them hear you. Two wonderful young people. Come on, stand all over this building. We're getting ready to get out of here. Listen, people been asking me the million dollar question. Pastor Jazz, how in the world are you going to fill a 10,000 seat sanctuary? I said, oh, that ain't my problem. No, oh, that ain't my issue. He said, first of all, if I lift him up, he'll draw me. All right. But listen, he does the drawing, but he send you to bring, do the bringing. See, if each one of you reach somebody, if each one of you, let me ask you a question. What you, what's going on at Jericho? Do you love it? Yeah. Don't fool me now. My bags is not fully unpacked, so just let me know. Do you love what's going on at the Jericho City of Praise? Are you being blessed? Are you being fed? Are you excited about this church? Are you excited about how God is moving? Then you need to tag somebody. And next Sunday or the following Sunday, you need to pack up. God gives you a car for you to fill it every Sunday morning. Amen. You shouldn't drive the church by yourself. Amen. Would you do me a favor, invite somebody else. And as soon as you invite somebody, they say, man, you keep bugging me about coming to that church. You know why? Because I just can't keep it. The Lord bless you. Lift your hands. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace in the name of the Father. Peace in the name of the Son. Peace in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. Father, thank you for the food and the fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the glory hall.